Hello everyone. In today's video, we will discuss the essay, The Sense of the Past, which is written by Lionel Trilling. First, let's look at some details about Trilling. Lionel Trilling is a 20th century American critic, essayist and also a teacher. He became a teacher at the age of 21. Trilling was a member of a literary group named New York Intellectuals. Now, just as from the name we understand, this was a group of American writers and critics and they were from New York. Now, these intellectuals in the group had similar political ideas, left-wing ideas or communist ideas. And they wrote for left-wing magazines and journals like Partisan Review, which is also another communist journal. And this group what was the main subject of their writing? So New York intellectuals, they mostly, uh, they were not like the new critics because they tried to connect literature with their culture. So for them, it was important to study history, the culture in order to understand literature. Okay, so that is the kind of background from where Lionel Trilling is coming from. And as I have mentioned before, he was a teacher. And he was also a Jew. He came from a Jewish family. And when he became a teacher, he started teaching literature. When he became a teacher, he became the first Jewish professor in the English department of the uh, Columbia University, the university in which he got into. And as a teacher, as a critic, as a researcher, he analyzed the contemporary cultural, social and political implications of literature. That is, just as how the New York intellectuals, his group of uh, the intellectuals, the writers, just as how they did, he too tried to connect literature with history. Trilling was an important contributor. He gave essays to publish in this journal called Partisan Review. It was not only thrilling, actually, there were many important writers like George Orwell, uh, T.S. Eliot and so on, who also published their essays in this journal. I have provided some of the important works of thrilling. They are The Middle of the Journey, Matthew Arnold, E.M. Foster. Matthew Arnold and E.M. Foster, these are some uh, critical analysis he did on the works of Matthew Arnold and E.M. Foster. And then for this particular essay, this would be the most important work. The Liberal Imagination Essays on Literature and Society, which was published in 1915. And also the work titled The Journey Abandoned. Okay, let's look at a small introduction to the essay. So this essay, The Sense of the Past, this was actually given by Trilling as one of his speeches in his university. And the first time that he published this essay was in the journal titled Partisan Review. This is the journal we just discussed now that the New York intellectuals used to publish their works in this journal. Also, we talked about Eliot, George Well and such other important writers were also publishing their works here. So, in 1942, for the first time, he published his essay, The Sense of the Past, in the journal titled Partisan Review. And then, after eight years, he is publishing the same essay in his book, The Liberal Imagination, Essays on Literature and Society in the year 1950. Now, when we go through the essay, you will understand that the major idea that Trilling is trying to convey to us is similar to T.S. Eliot's idea in his essay titled, The Tradition and the Individual Talent. That is, both of these critiques, they are both stressing on the importance of a past, about our tradition, the history, the background and all these things are important and literature is not separate from all these. This is what both T.S. Eliot and Trilling is emphasizing in their essays. Okay, so now let's move on to the essay. The essay titled The Sense of the Past begins with Trilling's analysis of how literature is taught in universities. And Trilling is not supporting this. He is criticizing, questioning the study of literature in the universities of United States. And why is he criticizing? It is because in the universities, 
more importance is given to the history of literature than literature instead of learning the literature well understanding and analyzing literature properly what are the students taught the students are taught the history of literature more importance is given to history than literature itself and also trilling mentions that in a university there is always a doubt regarding criticism and scholarship criticism is when you criticize something you question something if you are given a book and you are asking questions about it analyzing and questioning it that is criticism but if you are given the book and you just by heart whatever is given to you just as how you learn science that is scholarship wherein you are learning something as it is given to you that is scholarship now criticism or questioning is thought to be an aggressor whereas scholarship is thought to be the defender trilling also says that literature is thought of as an object of knowledge now that is not true when we read a novel or when we read a book that is related to literature our main intention is not simply to gain knowledge so we can't think of literature as simply an object of knowledge and then trilling talks about the genetic study of art that is according to trilling literary history used the methods of science now just now we talked about universities where literature is not taught properly according to trilling and he also says that literary history is taking the methods of science like how you learn science that is the same way that literary history is also taught so one of these methods there are several methods how science could be taught among those one of the methods that is used to learn literary history also is the genetic study now in science genetic study could be like how did this dna from where did this dna come how did uh, this particular trait come into this person and so on in literature when you are using the same method as in science that is when you are using genetic study to learn literary history then genetic study would be how the work of art came into being so using this method if we are analyzing literary history we will be learning about the social political cultural and all these backgrounds about the poet all these extra information would be also considered but here trilling says that whatever information we get from the genetic study of a work should be only an added value that is if you are learning about a book whatever is written inside the text of the book should be our source the main source whatever background information we know should be the added value it should add more meaning to the text okay but what is the problem the problem is that the genetic study can be easily vulgarized it is found that in such studies the work of art becomes secondary and the conditions which created it becomes primary so instead of focusing on the book and then giving secondary importance to the other background information sometimes what happens with genetic study is that we give too much of information to what background what historical context uh was the reason for this writer to write this book what was the political reason what was the culture all these things become more important than the text itself so the work of art becomes secondary and the conditions becomes uh, primary so this is the problem with genetic study of art and this type of study is done in the universities just as now trilling told that is the literary history is given more importance than literature itself and then trilling says this kind of a scientific study is important in science in science if you are asking a question you should get the correct certain answer there shouldn't be i think so uh, this would be etc in science and then in that case it is not uh, something that you will learn in science it's not a fact okay but this type of certainty is not needed in literature this type of certainty is only meant for science not literature this is what trilling is telling and then trilling tells that now see whatever i am telling you right now that literature should get more importance than literary history 
this is the same thing that new critics also said okay now you don't have to be confused it is not that trilling is supporting the new critics you will understand afterwards hmm? he is not completely supporting the new critics but at some points in the essay trilling is telling that this is the reason why new critics said so okay here also he is telling us see new critics also told the same thing that is text should be important the meaning of a work should be taken from the text he says new critics revolted against scientific study of literature literature is not science you can't use methods of science to learn literature so new critics wish to restore the autonomous status of literature and to see it again as an agent of power i hope you have understood that is trilling us not saying that we should be all like the new critics we should only read the text we shouldn't give any importance to historical uh, political social or any such background details no trilling is not telling us to analyze the text like new critics according to trilling we should give primary importance to the text that is what new critics did along with that historical background political background culture all this is important but it should be secondary it should not be the main source of study it should be secondary the text is primary all these are secondary and they are important we should know all these background details it should be secondary okay and then trilling tells us about the faults of new criticism that is earlier trilling said that new critics agree that text is primary text is most important literature is most important he agrees with that but there are some faults in new criticism that is what he is telling us he is giving us three faults firstly the chief fault of the new critics is the illusion that anything can be discovered through hard intellectual work and concentration that is new critics think that the complete meaning of the text is there in the text itself if you continue to read this again and again if you put in a lot of hard work and concentration you will find you can find any kind of meaning any meaning could be discovered in the text and that according to our trilling is wrong the second mistake is the elucidation of concepts like irony and ambiguity which became rituals now irony ambiguities new critics whenever they are reading text they look for ironies in the text they look for ambiguity now this search of irony and ambiguity they claim that a good text should have these now that is also again a uh, wrong notion again it is one of the faults of new critics according to trilling and lastly he says new criticism asserts that the text is more important than the historical elements that are or were instrumental in its creation that is okay but the point that the text is only important that is a fault okay drilling points out that literature will always be a historical study you can never learn literature completely you could never learn the complete uh, meaning of literature of a work without understanding the historical background in which the work was written without understanding the personal experience of the poet we might only get parts of meaning here and there from the text and even that might not be completely true unless we have a proper understanding about the background in which the work has been written so this is another fault of new critics and trilling himself says that even though there are faults in new criticism he is not completely rejecting new criticism he understands their point he understands that the whole point of these new critics is they want to give more importance to the literary text he understands that but there are these faults and he says even though these faults are there new critics still brought a new way a new kind of looking at literature so when we discussed the fault with new critics we saw that the most serious fault was that they do not consider history at all okay so then uh, trilling gives us some reasons or he tells us why and how literature and history is related literature is historical without history you can't learn literature how is that without literature you can't learn history how is these both so interconnected and here we have three different ways 
the first is that in the past in the earlier days the poet was supposed to be a historian of the personal national cosmological events so according to trilling in the earlier times a poet was like a historian a poet will write poems and the history of the time period or his personal history or the history of the cosmos the space all this would be written by poets in their poems see when we prepare for our ugc net exams set exams all these exams we will learn through the different time periods and we find that in the earlier times before the anglo norman period in the old english period especially in order to understand the history of those times what do we do now our uh, researchers our critics and our analysts they learn the poems and the prose or whatever we can get the literary pieces and from the literature we try to understand the history of the time right so a poet in a way is a historian and secondly we understand that literature is historical because any work exists by virtue of its connection with past works that is according to lionel trilling in order to understand the importance of one work we should compare it with other works of the past for example if we should understand the importance of the works the poems written during the romantic movement we know the poems written uh, during the romantic movement were very simple they wrote about the ordinary people the ordinary life without any sophisticated language there is no much uh, inner meaning or denotations hmm? it's very plain simple poems works now why are we giving them a lot of importance to know that we should compare these works with the works written during the age of enlightenment when Uh, the poets and the writers they all wrote for people who were educated now how boring it would be or how humiliating in a way humiliating it would be if you go to a bookstore and you can only find books which are meant for people with phd's and higher intellectual levels if you know latin only you can read books only if you know greek uh, latin all these important or scholarly so called scholarly languages only then you can read books it was very difficult then during the age of enlightenment so all of a sudden wordsworth and coleridge they are deciding that no this is not right so we should all we should write poems for the ordinary people too the clados they do not have to know all these elements, different languages the and all the references in order to in order to simply read a book so this has led to the romantic movement and the poems symbol poems so we call them uh, the ordinary life experiences which are depicted in them so the same way to understand a work we should also know what works came before this so trilling says that we read any work within the clear scope of historical elements and one more point why is literature historical the third point is pastness renders additional aesthetic quality to the work and contributes to its aesthetic power when you know about the background you you find the work more interesting the work becomes more relatable it becomes more aesthetic so these are the three ways how literature is historical history learning of literary history is part of literature now just as i mentioned before trilling is not saying historical sense is very important we should only learn historical sense we should only learn the background no trilling tells us that historical sense has both positive and negative sides we have mentioned already that historical sense is needed but there are negative aspects too for example it could be given more importance like what we are doing in the universities right now okay but just because it has a negative aspect we can't simply escape from it it is required historical sense is important historical sense is necessary to appreciate literature and this historicity of literature was rejected by new critics that is one of the biggest drawbacks that lionel trilling find in new critics now to make us understand about the importance of historical sense lionel trilling gives us some examples he says that any attempt to make shakespeare a contemporary will make him monstrous see suppose you are reading one of the works written by shakespeare 
here trilling talks about hamlet and then merchant of venice now while you are reading the text if you think about shakespeare as another person who is uh, currently living during your period you you will find that shakespeare is a terrible man you will be able to you will put a lot of charges on him that he is not respecting women he is not respecting jews you will talk a lot of him because you think that he if you are uh, talking about a person who is living in this century there are certain moral values he is supposed to have no we are talking about women equality we are talking about cultural equality all this is not found in shakespeare's works so don't think about shakespeare as a contemporary don't think about him as a person who is living right now in your generation in your century that will make shakespeare a bad person but think about shakespeare as a person from the past for example shakespeare's work hamlet to appreciate hamlet a sense of past is required and he says 20th century feminist critics they have cited hamlet as an example of anti feminist ideas trilling says that they thought about shakespeare like this because they thought of shakespeare as one of their contemporaries as another man who is living in the 20th century that is why this happened because they made him their contemporary they forget that the western world in shakespeare's time was male dominated it was not like the kind of society that we are living in today and objectification of women was normal then in those days it was completely normal it was not at all thought to be something that was wrong okay so and women were seen as property of their husbands and that is why we have uh, some instances in the book where in ophelia for us we might find that it was not right of hamlet to have talked to ophelia like that but don't think about the story to be taking place in today's world and then you will find a lot of mistakes but this story has taken place the context the background of the story is a lot of years ago hundreds of years ago that is when the story is taking place and that is how we should read it otherwise the story might look too um, anti feministic same is the case with merchant of venice merchant of venice is thought to be a novel which uh, in many ways did not portray did not show the jews properly okay again uh, trilling says the same thing that this book has to be read in a different context that is how we should read it so shakespeare becomes a contemporary when one realizes that he was a man of his age the validity and relevance of his work remain in its pastness so we should remember that he is from the past his works are based on those times only then his works will be relevant and another example that trilling gives us the same way that we should read the works based on the past is wordsworth immortality ode and wordsworth's prelude so what's the point of giving us all these examples trilling was telling us why historical sense is important so historical sense is important to admire a poem written even a hundred years before the poem submits itself to one kind of perception in one age now the women who read shakespeare's uh, works we can't say that women read but still even if a woman had seen a shakespeare's play during those times they wouldn't have thought about how ophelia has been objectified how she is humiliated and all these things but a woman in the 21st century wouldn't think about it the same way uh we might think about how this is not right why there is no equality and all these things so the same work will have different meaning in different ages that is why in different periods of time the same work can be differently powerful it wields a different kind of power in each age to know that power what should we have we should have a historical sense we should know about the historical background and trilling also says that the poet is an effect of environment but we must remember that he is no less a cause he may be used as the barometer but let us not forget that he is also the part of the weather hmm? now to understand this you imagine a class now the teacher and the students are important right now teacher will create an environment in the class 
if the teacher is very strict the class is going to be very strict the teacher can decide whether the her class should be very strict whether it should be interesting whether it should be funny and all those things but we should also understand that the students also play an important role we should also remember that it is not only the teacher who decides how the class should be okay maybe we can understand if uh, she is a strict teacher we can maybe guess that it is going to be a strict class if she is going to be a very funny teacher you can guess that it is going to be a very funny class but let us not forget that the teacher will change according to the students also even though the teacher is very funny she is very friendly if the students are being very naughty the teacher will decide otherwise she may not be able to remain funny and friendly the same way the poet is part of his historical background but the historical background if the background changes that will affect the poet also okay a simple point that trilling uh, discusses now trilling talks about words and ideas see words can control us only if we let the words to control us my parents always tell me that you shouldn't listen to others when they say that you can't do something see those people are simply using words now i can decide whether i should listen to them or not only if i give words to control me i give words the power to control me only then those words will affect me the same is the case with ideas also an idea could be positive or negative just like words an idea could control us only if we give the power otherwise no now people like schopenhauer nietzsche and there were other people in the romantic movement a lot of ideas were put forward by these people and some say that they gave a lot of radical ideas which gave birth to nazism that is nazism was a result of the ideas given by these people and here lionel trilling is telling us that see the idea was not given to them uh, given to any particular person country or the government to form a nazi government they simply put forward the idea which they had even though these ideas were available all throughout europe and america only germany responded to them in a particular way and trilling says when we transfer ideas the idea is not exactly transferred as it is okay the second person who hears the idea doesn't take the idea as it is with whatever modifications he can make the idea is also transformed a little bit in a personal way and used uh, by the person the same way when the ideas are put out into the world different people take the idea in a different way the same way the meanings that we derive from a text based on its background could be also a bit different and then lionel drilling discusses nietzsche's view take on historical sense according to nietzsche the historical sense is a sixth sense just like how we have five senses historical sense is a sixth sense and for nietzsche historical sense and an artistic sense these both are the same if you have to say that someone has a good artistic sense then it should also mean that he has a historical sense according to nietzsche that is nietzsche also believes he also claims that historical sense is very important nietzsche defined the historical sense as the capacity for realizing the order of the rank of the valuation according to which a people a community or an individual has lived that is historical sense is our ability to understand the background how the people or community or the individual lived and what was the uh, situation of the institutions the way of life the culture the morals manners philosophy art it is understanding all these aspects of a particular time that is what is historical sense according to nietzsche 
So here Lionel Trilling is pointing out that all these Nietzsche, even Karl Marx, he also said that history is important. So all these people are claiming that historical sense is very important when we analyze the work. Trilling concludes by saying that modern writers today are ignoring the historic sense. Trilling says that the 20th century urgently needs the instinct for realizing the order of rank of cultural expressions. That is, we are not giving enough importance for the background historical sense right now. So, so Trilling wants the readers and writers of the 20th century to understand the importance of historical sense and analyze a work, even the critics, to analyze a works based on this too. It is not that he wants us to give prime importance to only historical sense. The major idea he conveys is historical sense is important when the text is seen as primary. So giving more importance to historical sense is the fault in our universities right now. And what he wants us to do is analyze a work of art by looking at the work as the primary source. The historical sense should not be ignored. It should be also taken into consideration, but it should not be primary. And thus we find that T.S. Eliot's views in T.S. Eliot's work, The Tradition and Individual Talent, is in a way even reflected in this essay, The Sense of the Past. With that, we have come to an end to this video. I hope you have understood. Let me know your suggestions in the comment section. And if the video was useful to you, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.